if you were to like a regular person, this would be like a thousand dollars. If you were to work for 23 years and earn, let's say, a million dollars, let's say that that portion is sent not to you. <laughs> it's off the books, it belongs to someone else. And then now all of that money belongs to the tip district. Um, so in Chicago, the Board of Education is supposed to get almost 54% of your property taxes. But the issue is, if you look at this particular property you go from this owner, um, only 24% of his property taxes were captured by the district. The Board of Ed only got 39%. So they're supposed to get 54%. And that's where some of the issues are coming in. That's where you get a lot of the school closings and all of that. Because they're missing probably up to 11, somewhere between 11 and 18% of the revenue that they're supposed to receive from the taxes. But all of that money is going to someplace else. How do you find out where it's going? Ah, get it. <laughs> Um, so we're going to get to that in a second. There are 163 tip districts in the city of Chicago. In 2011, they collected $454 million in property taxes. Um, so the Chicago News Co-op, it's, it's no longer in effect, um, discovered that half of all the property taxes captured by tip districts to pri for sent to private businesses. And these are the sort of businesses that they were sent to. So you guys remember the Hyatt Hotel and Hyatt Park? Harbor Court created their own CDC using that those tip funds. Um, the Kmart Target, Target's over on um, Marshall Plaza. There you go, 87 was a tip. The new Sarah Lee project, uh, 3.5 or 5 million. And uh, the Chicago Symphony, Block 37, you name it, ain't none of these here, okay? So you know. And um, so that's pretty much where a lot of the cash is going. So, the problem with tips, of course, is that they can be abused. Uh, they are often controlled by mayors with no real oversight, so there's not really a body of people. There are a few places that have something in place, which is what I want to do here. We have a council that will um, sort of advise our aldermen as to how we want those monies to be spent, but we first have to know how much money we have and where it is, right? So um, it's difficult to determine why or how they're created in tip districts, and there's no sound reason for creation. So a lot of the tip money, you know, there's actually a presentation where, you know, Timmy's walking down the street, the little boy Timmy says, oh, this sidewalk has a crack in it. I'm on the Magnificent Mile with a crack here. And the mayor goes, ah, oh, you can fix that with tip funds. And that is, that is actually what happens. They say, you know, this building is old, water tower place, right? It's ancient, it needs some help, it's distressed. Let's give it some funds. Um, so that's kind of one of the ways that it is it's abused. There are some better cases of that. Obviously, if you think about even high chart, um, it's not necessarily a bad thing that they got high. It's not even bad for us, actually, for us as well. So it can be a good and a bad thing. The biggest issue is that we don't know how much it is, where it's going, what's being created, and what time it's being created. Um, so, the biggest fun fact is that despite reporting budget shortages, the city had more than 1.5 billion in unspent tip funds at the end of 2010. So, 1.5 billion dollars that is a fact, they have the money, we have spreadsheets that was reported from a legitimate, credible news agency, 1.5 billion dollars in unspent tip funds at the end of 2010. But the same year after that, we had school closing and teacher strikes and all of the kind of weird stuff. Um, so basically what we're looking at now is creating something like this map, and you guys will be able to see it too. I have it, um, I'll post it up to the website. But they did, Civic Lab did a 27th Ward experiment where they had people go out, collected all the property tax bills, looked at what really got spent and where the money went. And it took about a year to do it. But basically what they what they figured out is that if they could if they could process these. We can have one of these reports in every single ward that comes with your property tax bill. And then we can use that information to then advise our aldermen exactly what we want those tip funds to be used for. Rather than just saying, oh, well, I paid my property tax bill, or the mortgage company paid my tax bill. No, hope everything goes okay. This way, we actually have a, a, a report, not only for free accountability of saying, hey, this is what we want our money spent on, but the secondary accountability that says, hey, as of last year, you guys told us that this is where the money went, you know, and we either do or don't see that same result. Um, so basically why, what, what we need you guys to do now here is Civic Lab is petitioning to have all property tax bills identified down to the penny where all your money is going. 
So you can sign up. We have a petition going around um, to become a tip illuminator. It's called the Tip Illumination Project. And Sharon was there as well this Thursday. And we broke out into groups. And they're looking for diverse wards. So right now they only have a lot of wards up north that have a lot of tip, tip districts. So there aren't a lot of south side neighborhoods that are doing this project. Um, I think right now maybe Washington Park may participate. But it would be really, really cool if you guys are looking at um, South Shore on this project. Um, and I'm not sure, Sharon, you wanted to talk about what you guys did, just sort of overview of what your breakout was about. What we're trying to do is get information. Um, in our ward, we have seven tips, and it's my understanding that one is at 100%, one is at 80%. One is at 60%, one is at 40 and there are two at 1%. Uh, beyond that, we just need information. It's very hard to get information relative to what the tips are called. They're not sorted by ward, so it's very hard. There are like 5,000 entries on a spreadsheet. So you would have to go through that whole spreadsheet to figure out exactly where our tips are and, and how the money is being spent. And I just have a couple of questions. When we started the USX project, it was my understanding it was a shared project between the 7th Ward and the 10th Ward. But when uh, the city sent me information about our tips, it said that 100% of the USX TIF or the lakeside was in our ward, and I'm, I don't know what that means. So I really don't have any further information. It's a learning process. Um, one other thing, um, I was at the next meeting on Tuesday evening, and it was stated that South Shore High School is not paid for, and um, I don't know which one of those TIF funds the money would be coming out of, but uh, all of that money annually is going to finish paying whatever is owed for South Shore High School. That was, uh, that news was astounding. I, I could not believe it, but uh, I'm sure there's some more poltergeist hype around there to discover the actual of the From my understanding, because the TIF money, all the property taxes that are generated from the district go back to pay the debt of the projects that they started. So if those projects have not been paid for, we may have that money in TIF, but it may already be promised to unfinished and unpaid projects. Maybe all of it, you don't know. So that's why it is really important for transparency. And Chicago, 30 to 40 percent of Chicago is covered in TIF districts. I mean, they're everywhere. So, and Chicago has one of the largest TIF programs in the country. It's not unique to Chicago, but it's one of the largest in the country. So. Thank you. Um, yeah. So, I the, those are, that's one of the projects that I wanted us to take up. I don't know if there's maybe one or two people or three or four, however many, who wanted to become part of the. Typically, the name of this project is Civic Lab. It's, Civic Lab is a really, really cool organization who's committed to doing things exactly like how we're doing is democratizing and distributing as much information as possible. And so they need as many volunteers as they can possibly get, and they're definitely looking for some diversity um, with their report. So I've included the link here. They'll also be posted to Facebook and the website and everything. Um, but three names you need to know. Ben Jarofsky, that's J O R. O B S K Y. Ben Jarofsky, he's been doing this reporting for like 10 years now. Chicago Reader. Chicago Reader, yeah. Um, the other one is Tom Tresser. And I'm forgetting, Tresser is T R E S S E R. He's one of the main um, chairs for Civic Lab. And the third one, I forget her name. I have to look it up and I'll send it to you guys. Um, but they're the three who are sort of heading it up. Um, it's third lady to Lawndale. So definitely, if you guys are. Um, doing it. If not, everybody needs to go sign the petition. I'll definitely post some links to sign the petition online um, in order to, in order for us to get those property tax bills that are that transparent. 
And so that's about it on tips. Um, if you guys have any questions, write them down and I'll try to get the answers for you. In the meantime, uh, please give Josie Davis a big round of applause. She's coming in from all uh, with a walk. Hi, thank you very much for um, letting me talk to you today. Um, my name is Josie Davis, and I'm the producing artist in charge of a project called Wake Up Walls. And um, what I'm doing is for a month this spring, I am putting dancers on the rooftops in Chicago. Uh, as you're commuting into work, you will have the joy of seeing people perform the waltz on the rooftops as you're starting the day. So uh, I am. Uh, the past few months, I've been down in South Shore talking to the students down here and trying to rally up the community to the project. And you guys have been enthusiastic, I've had a lot of support, and I'm trying to reach out a little more and see how you can get involved. Um, so, uh, basically, I'm setting out two or three rooftops here in South Shore where I can put my dancers and hopefully some people from South Shore want to, you know, dance, uh, be the dancers themselves. Um, auditions are happening next month, and then uh, I'm also looking for one or two more guest choreographers. So, um, uh, my choreographer uh, is moving back to New York, so, <laughs> the week of rehearsals, so I'm uh, reaching out for a little more support in that way, too. But, um, basically, uh, that's the gist of the project. Um, Feel free to ask me some questions, but we're also working in West Loop in Andersonville. So if you have an image in your mind, it's um, it kind of a citywide project, so people are kind of commuting in different directions across the city. And it just, um, in my mind, I don't want to focus on one community. I want different neighborhoods and different communities to be involved um, by experiencing the same kind of artistic. Uh, What's the date? Passing. Um, May 13th to June 13th. Is there a website? There is. Wakeupwaltz.com. Oh, so, wake up waltz. wake up waltz, like you're waking up in the morning, and then waltz, like dance. Cool. And so. how many rooftops do you have so far? Uh, we, we have two. We um, One here, at, uh, almost confirming two down to South Shore. Uh, two or three in Uptown. Uh, possibly the Water Tower in Andersonville and two in West Loop. For your auditions, are you looking for professional dancers or is there an age range? Dance, right? come audition. <laughs> <laughs> so, and no, you don't have to, I mean, it's, uh, you know, we'll be choreographing versions of the waltz, but um, I, uh, if I wasn't producing it, then I would definitely be in it, and I certainly have no experience in the waltz. So that gives you some idea of the level. Um, I just want enthusiasm, and I'm more interested in your eagerness to climb a ladder and not be afraid of heights than um, any you know past experience in the walls. So. Um, okay, and uh, one more thing is that it will happen in the morning time. So if you are interested in dancing, um, you need to know that you need to be available for at least two days a week to um, come and dance for an hour or so in the morning. So there are three or four months to talk to your employer, that kind of thing, and it is, there's a stipend available, so I am trying to pay people, but um, those details can be flushed out if you contact me directly. So, okay, thanks. That was uh, pretty awesome. Much better way of doing it than I did. <laughs> um, Billy, do you want to come up and actually do a raffle? That is really cool raffle going on right now. Yeah, um, we have. Uh, it is it is Valentine's season, and um, it is time to uh, show some South Shore love. So, uh, so we have uh, some raffle items that are very important, um, very exciting. Uh, I guess we're going to make it into a trivia question. Um, mm. And I'll try not to make them too complex. But, uh, let's uh, let's start with um. Why don't we see first person raise their hand? Um, and some we're gonna have to, to judge that one. Yeah, first let's the first item we've got is uh, Smokey Robinson love song. Yes, yes. Uh, the second one is Eddie James love song. And, and finally, it is uh, Love and Basketball DVD. Uh, 
I will be taking this home if no one claims it. <laughs> so uh, we will start, let's start with Smokey. You can always start with Smokey, Rob. Okay. Um, featuring, ooh, it's also got a quiet storm on there. Um. It does. So uh, let's, let's start, let's start with the first question. What, uh, what first lady of the United States grew up in South Shore? Oh, <laughs> oh I thought, wait, who is there? Okay, I saw right there Michelle. Um, so these are some of the four projects that we have 
And these are right now what has to be voted for. Our, our deadline for here to have all of our votes in for the project that we're going to send in is the 25th. So I need everybody to vote on what project they want us to work on. And then uh, Billy, myself, and another friend of ours will come together and write the program or whatever you guys vote on and send it to State Farm. And from there, we'll have to like really hook it, you guys. You guys like get a lot of those up. Chicago is one of those cities where oh, this thing happens a lot. So it's it's some stiff competition, but I think I think we can do it. I'm pretty sure we can. Quick question for the baseball team: Is it specific for boys? Is there a way to integrate the girls because they seem to be just as wayward and dangerous as boys? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I thought about. It. I'm not much of a sports person, but and I'm not from here, but apparently softball is pretty big. So I was like, all right, maybe we could do two teams, maybe a girls softball team and a boys baseball team. Um, but I thought that would be awesome because we have an existing field, but I would love to have a girls softball. Yeah, so I'll, I'll leave it up for a week. It sounds like that's pretty much going to be it, but I'll leave it up for a week. I haven't seen a product like this submitted in State Farm's two years of doing this. So if that one goes, then I think it'll be really crazy. Um, so yeah, that's about it. On that note, I know that um, ceasefire is here. I'm sorry. Oh, ceasefire is here, so they're gonna um, go ahead and talk to us a little bit, and then I think we got we're working out of that. We're out of here. Oh. Oh. Okay. And we just before um, before we have Tony from ceasefire speak, we are so excited. We're just gonna go over quickly. I've got the, the crime stats for the last seven days. The last. 28 days this week. Um, and just, just to sort of give you kind of a, a little bit of context, right now we're seeing, uh, over the last 28 days, we've seen a 200% spike in murders. Um, over, the, over the course of, we're seeing criminal sexual assault down in the long, I mean, the monthly term, but we've seen a 100% increase in the last week. Um, if if we looked at aggravated battery, burglary, felony theft, we're all seeing increases. In long term, we're seeing increases in burglary, felony theft, motor vehicle theft, and murder. Um, so the situation is still very, 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 very significant, and it's going to uh, it's obviously going to take a lot of action. So we're excited to have our friend Tony from Ceasefire, and uh, we're going to then we're going to have a good constructive dialogue. All right, good afternoon, everyone. Hi. All right, uh, yeah, well, my, my name is Tony. This is Baltimore, and this is uh, Tyler. We are from Six Five. We are an intervention prevention program that's trying to, uh, trying to uh, combat the virus. And uh, as you see, as, uh, as he was saying, like, this is pictures of uh, where stuff, where things is happening, that wherever there is a Six Five, uh, Office that because we only uh, they only we only limit to certain places, but wherever we are at, you can see that the, the crime rate have went down, and uh, that's why we're trying to get more involved, more involved in the schools. Cause we're trying to stop the, the violence and everything before it happens. We try to get in on the front end, and if some way we don't make it in on the front end, then we try to get in where we can stop retaliation. And with doing the retaliation, we have what we have called a hospital response team. They are located at uh, Christ, Strozers, and uh, one more hospital. And we're trying to get Northwestern and Northwestern. Now, we're in the process of trying to get off in the more hospitals because, uh, you know, when things happen and people get to the hospital, that's where you see a lot of where, where people do, uh, get you know out of control because one they love one have been hurt, and so we try to get there and stop them from retaliation. Uh, I have some uh, literature and stuff I'm gonna leave, so you all is free to uh, help yourself to it. And I, I have a number on there, so if you need uh, to talk with me, the number and everything is on there. Now I'm gonna let my uh, co-worker here get a chance to talk. I ain't gonna talk, you know, take it off. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, how y'all doing? Good. Again, my name is Bernard Baltimore. Uh, Baltimore. Uh, my name is Bernard Baltimore, uh, Inglewood. I used to be a violence interrupter like uh, Tony here. Now I'm an outreach worker. So I, I tend to deal with more uh, detail of when our high-risk individuals is uh, 
actually uh, got bad activities that they into, street activities, but uh, even further to say, like a uh, home, like they got nowhere to live, and things of that nature. So it's my job to be able to make sure that they got the necessary tools to be able to survive out here. And I try to point them in the right direction. I try to get them back in school. I try, I'm, I'm trying to be like the second mother or the second father. And um, it's, 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 it's something that's needed. It's, uh, our statistics of uh, saying ceasefire, we are like second to the mother. We, we have been rated second to the mother and uh, it's a struggle. It's a struggle to be able to, my caseload is 15. So imagine why we need to be in certain areas, why we need to be in all areas. If my caseload is 15 and we got like over 6,000 high-risk individuals in our neighborhood, I'm not even really just top of the top. So I, uh, I understand that my job may look or sound like it's very hard, but it's a lot more work to do. And being here, I would, we would love to be able to, uh, you, you all got a great thing going, we would love to be able to get offices in these neighborhoods and uh, get you all to understand exactly all of what we do to be able to get more in depth with uh, the youth, the high-risk individuals. And that young lady, she was saying something about a basketball team, a baseball team. This is Coach Tyler right here. He actually uh, have coached baseball team. He has coached uh, basketball, basketball, girls basketball, softball. And I'm going to turn it over to him now. But believe me, uh, we in a fight with y'all. And I, that, that the sport thing, that's a great thing because we doing it uh, uh, in Inglewood right now. And it's really taking off. We got more guys that's uh, less of time on the street, less of time to think about breaking in your house, less of time to think about uh, touching that girl. You know, we even just recently, we got a, a girl that was raped. And uh, we got the father, we got all of that. He turned himself in, everything. So we definitely got success rates out there. But we take it and we will do it together. And good afternoon again, everyone. I'm Coach Tyler, and uh, my background is with sports. I come from the park district. I was a recreational leader for five years at Lemon Park. Uh, I coach the league baseball as well as girls' fast pitch softball. And let me tell you, some of our girls and boys are the best at it. If we train them up in which way they should go, when they grow older, they will not depart, and they um, will be headed to big things. Um, I, too, am an outreach worker for Seas Fight in Inglewood, and um, working with high-risk participants is one of our main goals to change mindsets, therefore giving the individuals a, change, uh, a chance to change their behaviors. Um, <clears throat> what we also do is work with whole communities, to change behavior norms or what it seems to be the norm in that community. So to hear that you all are uh, interested in starting a, a youth baseball and, and, and softball league is excellent. Um, when I president visiting uh, Half Park High School, I read the newspaper this morning, and um, what he said that we have to get back to is, is building our communities and what type of communities are we building. So when we give our, our youth a chance and opportunity to grow up and become something. And um, also in building the community, getting back to uh, parenthood, fatherhood, and uh, motherhood and marriage, we together can build that community. And, uh, and uh, 